Today's video is on the assembly of the Yardmax YM0046 1.6 cubic foot electric concrete mixer from Home Depot. It's a uh, one bag mixer, I believe a 40 pound bag, uh, just to assist in, in mixing rather than using a wheelbarrow. And uh, today's video is just the assembly of the unit. Uh, I'll do another video another time on the actual uh, usage of it and uh, that's pretty much it let's get going so it turns out after doing the uh, job I uh, had to modify my tool list so this is the updated tool list uh, needle nose pliers a uh, 10 millimeter open end wrench, a 13 millimeter open end wrench. I uh, use this as a uh, kind of a spud wrench, kind of a centering tool to center the holes between the uh, upper and lower drum. It came in really handy and it helps get the the, uh, the gasket kind of out of the way. Um, a pretty good size uh, I think I want to say it's a number two um, Phillips. Uh, I used a, you ended up needing either two wrenches or two or a wrench and a socket. So I chose to use a wrench and a socket and uh, a, a 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter socket to match the two wrenches. And I use this short little extension, three inch ex extension. So that got me through the job. That is the latest. Oh, can't forget this the handy dandy knife. Always be safe towards your buddy, not your body. And fully retracted, no blade showing. Peace. After opening the uh, box, this is the first thing you see. And now that I've removed the parts from this styrofoam, put this off to the side, this is what is below. So, we will remove these parts and I'll lay them out on the concrete. YM0046 electric motor. 120 volt, 60 hertz, 150 watts. So laid out here on the concrete is the uh, all the parts that come in the box, minus the uh, hardware I have on my workbench. So that's everything that's in the box. So I'm going to dispose of the box, get out of the way, and uh, we'll get with putting this thing together. So here we have uh, laid out is the uh, the hardware kit. And it looks uh, pretty well laid out where each part of the process has, um, it's numbered. And then there's the parts, itemized parts list for each section and the tools required for each section okay here we are page seven assembly okay step one is mounting the uh, wheels to the uh, wheel bracket so i've got the wheel bracket here the wheels are covered in plastic don't worry about that at the moment we have section number one so we uh it looks like the two cotter keys and uh, some hubcaps. Let's check it out. Be 
very careful with razor knives, folks. This is probably one of the most dangerous tools around. People cut themselves regularly on these things. It's very, very, it just gets out of your control real quick. Always make sure the blade is fully retracted before you put it down. Wheels, that's the back side. The not so fancy side, that's the front side. Hubcap side. Put the wheel on. Stick the cotter key in. Head stops it from falling through. And we get our needle nose pliers and put a nice little bend in these. That is number one. Okay, we're going to do number two. I'll spare you the details. Okay, wheel number two is installed. Exactly the same as this one. No biggie. And uh, handy dandy hubcaps. I guess they just kind of snap in. They're attached. Wheel cap attached. Okay, step one completed. Both wheels, wheel caps, and we're just going to leave the plastic on for now. Okay, step number two is this bracket and this bracket. So we are going to put that with our 13 millimeter bolts and be aware that one of these is has a notch in it. So the one with the notch is the one that one with the notch is the one where the wheels go. So this bracket, this bracket will go here. Okay? The notch is on that side. That's where the wheels, that's the next step. and the washer okay the washer has a finished side and an unfinished side it's pretty much rounded on the edges so you want the finished side facing out Bolt up. washer finished side facing out nylon nut leave that loose and then let's run this one in. There we go. So, it looks like I need two tools here to tighten this up. And uh, you can either use two wrenches. I, I don't have another millimeter wrench, 13, so I ended up using a 13 millimeter socket. So, use that. Get your nut, righty touchy, lefty loosey. So now, step three is mounting the wheels onto the bracket that we just put the stanchion on. So, and remember, the wheels go on the rounded. And that is the stand. So we are on step four. We have uh, two uh, M8 by 55 millimeters. Okay, step number four is the step that I believe that they recommend having two people, but we're gonna do with one. So it's this T-fitting, the bucket, and the bracket. So this T-fitting, you want to have the bracket L shape facing out. So it goes out. Okay, so that goes that way. So the Z is favoring that way. Also, this is the motor mount. The motor mount goes on the side where the wheels are. This side. 
So we're gonna try to attempt this with a single person. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. So here we go. I'm grabbing underneath this. It's not a big deal. And slide that in. Slide that in. And voila. Now we're now we're cooking. That is that. And I just happen to have the bulbs right here. Okay, we want the all the nuts facing out. That's our make it look like we're thinking about what we're doing. So as as before, wash your fancy side out. Bolt and washer, fancy side out, and nylon nut. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, and now we'll go to the other side. Do the same thing. I think I'm just going to stop this right here and use it for for a soup pie. I like it. I like it like it is. You can make a bunch of chicken noodle soup. Of okay, we are now on step number five. Step number five, handy dandy knife. Be very careful. Okay, so step number five is mounting the mixing blades into the bottom bucket. So that's what we're going to do now. According to the drawing, the Phillips screws. in from the bottom up and then the rubber washer goes on doesn't matter which way the rubber washer is no particular side but it goes on here to keep liquids from escaping the bucket okay then Blade. Doesn't matter which one goes where. They're both the same. I left it loose. Okay, step six is uh, mounting the top part of the barrel. Okay, step number six is joining the two halves together. Uh, there's an arrow here and an arrow there. So that is where you line them up. Let's turn this. I've got my knee under it there. Get them all started first before I tighten them down. Just small Phillips that'll fit inside there. So I can line this hole up in there. Then oh yeah, that's much better. Last rim rim bolt. I found that you have to work this up for quite a few of the holes just because that gasket overhangs. So you gotta give a little bit of a ream job. Okay then this will go in. Then the rubber. The directions say cork gasket or something like that which they must have ran out of cork or something because this is not cork it's rubber it's kind of funny okay and 
And that is that. So now I'm going to go through and tighten all the bolts up. And I'm guessing, I tell you a wrench, but guess what? I'm going to use a socket. I'll let you know how that works out. Socket. Kind of like in the socket idea versus the wrench. So the one down, down in the bottom. Let's go down here. It's gotta be a little bit of a contortionist. I got it. It's tight. How's that? Okay, a slight uh, modification in the tool list. Um, using a socket for some of this stuff because a wrench is just I guess they're trying to show you you don't need many tools you can do it with some toothpicks and a, and a kitchen knife but you really this makes it a lot easier all right. start with that one go all the way around boom okay so that's that it's a cute little guy if you don't want to use it for concrete, you could probably mix gravy or uh, make a, a smoothie and multi-use. Okay, we are now on step number seven. Step number seven is the, uh, the mounting hole tipping bar locking plate. Number seven, always be safe. Okay, step seven. The uh, ring. So the ring looks like the finished side, not the unfinished side, faces out. It just goes over there like so. Here in this case, we use the flat washer on the bolt, fancy side out, like that. And let's just get this one started. Out. Okay, 13 millimeter socket wrench. Come around this side. And that feels good. Okay. Step number eight is the mixing handle. So we'll be mounting the mixing handle on next. And number eight hardware. It's right here. Oh boy, we've got a spring. Fancy stuff, handy knife. What I gather from the Scooby-Doo drawing is the spring goes in there like that. See that? And then hold it, line that up. Then you can kind of let it go down and snap that in. Okay, you have to put a little pressure on this because it's spring loaded. And then once it's in, you can let off. Now, I imagine you don't want to tighten this real, real tight. Let's take a look at this. Otherwise, you won't be able to move the handle out. The handle's got to be able to move out. And then go into there. Seems to be working. Okay, so you put that in, boom. Dumps it. So that's why it's a nylon nut, so it doesn't back off. So that's that. Okay, boys and girls, we're on step number nine, final step. What's the saying? Towards your buddy. Not your buddy. Hey, buddy, come here. I'm excited. Long uh, 13 mil, three nuts. 
Hmm. And an O-ring. So I happen to have this bench handy. So I'm I'm doing it like this because I'm lazy sometimes. So if you have a bench that you can do this, it seems to work better. See it? You're not fighting that. L motor. Goes into L shaft. And it's keyed the square section right there. see that but it's keyed and it wasn't straight up and down so I had to turn it a little bit so you might have to do that, Put that on. The ring is still in place is... I like it okay so now we have the two uh, nylon nuts here like this I'm just gonna put them on finger tight. Let's get started. Is all. Put that one on. Fancy side out. And the nut facing the same direction as the rest. And then that guy. And where's the other nut? I'm missing one. Oh, there it is. And right there and that one started so in this case i don't like to be all wedged in there so i'm gonna get an extension see then you have good working space there see so it pays not to just have the tools that are on the list let's try this one track okay yeah that that's a more better one okay and then these two wrench so this is the final product. Just FYI, it doesn't sit real high, so you can't dump this into a uh, wheelbarrow unless it, you have a really small wheelbarrow. Some, a lot of people I've seen online, they on uh, other videos. They just dump it right on the project that they're working on. But I don't like that idea because I don't really like having to move this thing around. So I'm going to see if I come up with another program. Either raise it up somehow or get a flatter. I do have a pan, a plastic pan for mixing mud. I may just dump it in that. But then I have to dump that into my project. So I'm... Uh, coming up with ideas the next video will show you that but we're going to run this thing and see what it does next stay tuned all righty then so let's see uh, what this thing will do we're not going to mix any concrete we're just going to fire it up so here we go 110 volts to the motor really quiet oh that's right i gotta turn it on okay so Let's, let's listen to this thing. Here we go. So there's a gear in it that rides on these holes. Rides in these holes. Hmm. Yeah, 
I see I see a sausage gravy mixer myself. That's it, man. Yard Max mini mixer assembly 101.